Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Imran Sadiq uh, and this is Web Squadron. Now I'm going to do something really, really simple here. It's just something that keeps cropping up now and again with people struggling with sections, you know, backgrounds, adding in their text and things like that. And they just start thinking about, well, how do I set the sizes and how do I make sure it's responsive? Now here's a, a section that I've already built for you. So here's one I prepared earlier, as they say. Okay, it's basically just one section. Okay, one section with two columns. Okay, and in section one, I've gone to style and I've added in a background image. So I've clicked over here. Okay, and then I've picked a image and inserted it. Okay, that was it. I then went over to my settings for my section. I then went to layout and I set it to be a box of 1000. I, the reason I did 1000 is because I'm on a MacBook Air, so I wanted to, it to fit on the screen I'm looking at. I then set the columns gap to be no gap and I set the minimum height to literally be just zero. No minimum height there because I will control the height using the columns or the padding of the column. Okay, so the section is just a section with two columns and it's got uh, boxed 1000, no gap, minimum height is set to zero. Okay, and it's just got an image in there. If I then go to the advanced tab, again, I haven't really changed or touched anything over here as well in terms of margin or padding. In fact, I'm just going to put it as zero, zero. Okay. Then I've added into column one, okay, three headers. I've added in a subheader. The typography for this is Londrina Shadow. And the size for this, rather than using pixels, I've used EM. If I put this as EM3, it's going to be the same size as header one. If I do it as a one, it's now going to be roughly the same size as the waffle text. If I set that as a two, it's now almost like two thirds the size of header one. OK, header one is the typography, a laundrina solid, and it is a size three. So if I put it as a two, it matches the subheader. If I do it as a three, it is bigger. If I do it as a five, it's even bigger. Yeah, we got the idea there. If I go for a one. And by the way, you can do 3.1, 3.2, 3.21, 3.22, 3.23. You can be quite specific on it, okay? But I'm just going for a three. And then we get to the waffle text. And here I just picked a completely different size uh, text uh, family of pop-ins. And I've set the size to a one. If I go for a three, again, look, I just want to show you. Obviously, it looks a lot bigger than header one because I'm using pop-ins and not Londrina solid. but I just want to get the idea of what's going on here, okay? And I changed the weight to be a 300 as well, just for the sake of it. Okay, cool. Now, when I go over to my column, okay, and I'm just going to get rid of the values here for a moment. Normally, if you've just added in your text into your section, your column, this is how it's probably going to look. Very tight, very cramped with no spacing. And that's because my margin and paddings are currently set to zero. In the good old days, I used to use pixels. And I would say, okay, the top will be 200 from the top and about, say, 100 from the bottom. Okay, so just to kind of get that into context, the bottom is roughly in line with where it says attribute at the moment. I mean, that's way too big. Let's just make that about 50. Let's make that about 150. Yeah, okay. So the when we're looking at it in context, the subheader is the start of it is roughly in this space here, yeah, between the padding and the Z index section, okay? And the bottom of the entire section is now roughly in line with where it says motion affects that box. Let me just make sure I remember that, okay? Rather than using pixels, so for the fonts we used EM, all right, remember that. For the fonts we used EM. But for the column, for the sizing, rather than using EM, I'm actually gonna use the percentage, okay? So I'm now going to start adding in some values. If I put in 50, that is way too big. If I go for 20, that's too small. 30, that's roughly not too far off. And if I just decrease it to 28, that is now roughly where it was where I was doing the pixels. Now the bottom, if I do about 10, and I'm just going to increase, I mean, I'm just going to go to about there. So that is now roughly how it looked when I did the pixels, okay? Now, if I hit update and I now make sure I'm in responsive mode, okay, 
just bear in mind where the bottom of that is, okay, and it's just in line with the bottom of the motion effects section there in terms of the box. When I hit tablet, okay, the section is now gone up by almost one entire, what I don't know, I don't know, 100 pixels-ish, something like that. But look at the, the text size in there. Let me just show you that. It's one of those blink and you miss it moment. Look at header one, okay, the text has shrunk, okay, they've all shrunk. But we still have that almost equal spacing at the top and bottom in relation to what it was on the desktop. Everything has shrunk a little bit. And when we go to tablet mode, let's just put it on 378, okay, that's roughly a, uh, an iPhone X XR kind of pixel width size, 378. Okay, again, look, everything has shrunk, but the gap between the top and the bottom there, it's almost in line. Obviously, what is making it appear bigger, if I'm honest, is that we do have column two, which at the moment is empty. So I might just go to column two, go to advanced, go to responsive and say hide on the mobile, like so. So when we're looking at the tablet and everything, it looks fine. So now let me just hit update. Okay, let's just take this page or the address. Let's go to private window. Let's put this in. Let's type in, I think it was section or sections. Yeah, section, there we go. Okay, uh, ignore the fact that it's hitting right up against the, the footer now, ignore that. But what we have is, that is your desktop mode. Okay, oh, look at that, I didn't, I should have put no repeat. Oh, that's gonna annoy me, I, I need to fix it. Sorry, I'm really sorry everyone, I need to fix that. That's gonna like, really, really annoy me. Go back to style, go back to my, uh, sorry, desktop, go back to my image. Position center, center, attachment, I want it to be, we'll go to scroll, no repeat, and I want it to be cover. God damn it, I should have done that before I jumped into here. Right, let's just go over here. Hopefully I don't need to purge. Yay, it's done it. Right, so on the desktop, we've got the subheader, the header, the waffle text, and we've got bigger spacing at the top and a little bit of spacing at the bottom. As I shrink this, okay, as I shrink it, can you see what's happening? The text it will start to shrink as well. Obviously I haven't done any padding on the left or right or the left more importantly, so sorry about that. I should have taken that into account as well, so bear that in mind next time. But what you can see here is that as I shrink down and I get to like, uh, there we go. As I start to shrink down and I get to the mobile node, okay, everything is shrinking down, but the text, it's all responsive in relation to one another, as is the size of the section. So that's a great way of when you have kind of crazed a style or a particular layout, and you want that you want there to be more space at the top for whatever reason. Maybe it's because there's something in the image above or whatever. You know, you just want to present it that way. This is a great way to do it, and this is how I tend to do all of my sections now. <clears throat> I don't just do pixels. I use the EM for the fonts, and I use the percentage for the sections in terms of the column spacing, and it just keeps everything basically hunky dory and pretty neat. I hope I hope that's good for you. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Bye.